Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply. If you're thinking about stepping into leathercraft, we've got a video made just for you. We're going to make two very simple projects, but they don't look simple. They look absolutely professional, and you're going to be surprised at what you're able to do with no skill and very few tools. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there. I'm going to take you straight to the website. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over to our pattern table, get started. One of the best things about Leathercraft, in my opinion, whether we're working on a simple keychain or a briefcase, let's make it our own. Let's go with the hardware color we want. Let's go with the shape, width, length, leather, so many possibilities. But let's go with just a simple keychain, get a start. We're going to learn a couple of things on this. So on our pattern, I want to make a pattern for every project for two reasons. Well, first off, let's make more of these, and I hope we will. But secondly, if something on my project isn't just right, I know exactly what I did. I can come back to my pattern and correct that. Now, this is just simple poster board. Makes a great pattern material. We'll talk about that in just a second. But let's start right here. So width-wise, go any width you want. We're going to go with a three-quarter inch, or about 1.9 centimeters. Lengthwise, and this will make sense, we're going five and a half inches, or about 14 centimeters, okay? On this end, we're going to come in one half of an inch. Therefore, my rivet isn't too close to the end. It's going to be a good secure closure, okay? So let's come in one half of an inch, about 1.27 centimeters. Right here, we're going to have to loop around a split ring. So let's give that one and a half inches, or about 3.8 centimeters. Well, we've got that measurement. Let's do the same thing again, one and a half. Down on this end, exactly the same thing as the other. Let's come in half of an inch, and then one and a half inches. So all told, super easy pattern. Well, hardware-wise, so many options. What leather do we have in our shop, and what would work best on that? Right there, the antique copper, that'd be gorgeous on, say, something along a burgundy or brown. We've got all kinds of gorgeous suede. That would be a beautiful combination. My favorite, antique nickel. But notice, too, we've got the matching rivets, so we can tie this whole thing together. Or how about a clip? Let's do a split ring on one end and a clip on the other. Again, there's so many possibilities in leather work, but let's keep it where it is. Let's take our pattern, jump over to our main table, cut some leather. There are all kinds of ways we can cut and mark our leather. I'm going to go with a simple box knife. Blades are cheap, easy to replace, and very sharp. I would say, let's go with a new blade on every project. To mark, we could use a pen, absolutely, or a pencil, but a pen's going to be a mess. Let's go with a simple awl. That's going to mark our edges and our rivet holes. So right here, this is our Lexi top grain. Great thing about Weaver, we absolutely sell full sides and hides, but we also sell a number of our leathers and smaller panels. Makes it very affordable for us crafters. So let's start right here. Let's make sure we've got a good square edge there. And with my square, I'm gonna come in three quarters of an inch, and I'm just gonna make a mark. Easy to see, but that's very accurate compared to say a pen, okay? Down here, five and a half inches, let's make a mark. And down here again, let's come in three quarters of an inch and make a mark right there. Okay, let's cut here. Notice how easy that leather cuts with a new blade. Okay, let's come down here and let's just cut right across. Well, there we go. That's easy enough, right? Let's take our pattern and let's mark our rivet holes. And we can absolutely see that. Okay, let's jump over to our punch table, knock this together. We're gonna go with a double cap rivet. It's the only rivet I use. We've got these in multiple sizes, multiple finishes. Basically, we've just got a cap and a post. But notice on our post, we've got a cap on the back. So even the backside of our project looks very finished. That's what we're looking for. Now, the reason I bring this up now, with our revolving punch, we've got one of the best punches in the business. Here's where we're going with this. So I want to use a smaller tube. Here's why. So if we go with the largest tube on our revolving, 
What's going to happen is we've got a lot of play in that rivet. Well, that's a pattern problem. Things aren't going to line up for us. But the bigger issue, that's just not durable. It's not going to last. So let's go with a much smaller hole on a revolving punch. In fact, I'd like to go with either the smallest or the second smallest. So let's punch our holes. Well, that's easy enough. Now, we don't have to go this route, but this is just one of the many options, one of the tools out there available to help us make a more finished project. This is called a round and punch. Comes in multiple sizes. Very nice, very professional. Now, over here, didn't use it. We wouldn't normally notice that, but that's gonna make a big difference on our project. Okay, let's move this out of the way. Now, with our rivets, I mentioned we have these in multiple sizes. Well, this is the medium. This is a 5 16 inch. Here's where we're going with this. So on a lighter leather, a thinner leather, notice how much post I've got sticking up there. I've set hundreds of thousands of rivets, but when I go to set that, it's going to offset on us. We've got too much rivet. So let's jump down to our quarter inch double cap. There we go. That's going to be just right. And our split rings. Let's go with a polished nickel, one and three eighths of an inch. That's a good size. It's not too big, not too little. So let's take this. Let's bring a rivet in from our top grain, our post from our top grain. Let's flip that around. Let's take our split ring. And there we go. Let's drop in a cap. One of the things I love about the double caps, we can snap that cap down on there without setting it. Makes assembly very easy. Okay, simple rivet setter. It's got a concaved end so we don't flatten our cap. Okay, well that's easy enough, right? Let's do the same thing to the other end. And there we go. We've got a very simple keychain. Notice the round end. That actually makes a big difference, but what a great gift, a very simple project that is very useful. Okay, next project up, let's talk about snaps and spots. We've got a feel for cutting leather, punching holes, and setting rivets. We are well on our way to more complex projects. Well, now let's add in spots and snaps, both very helpful on projects. We're going to go with a double wrap cuff. And for family and friends, this is a fan favorite. Looks good, easy to make. So with a spot, that's simply a leather decoration. And I use these on most projects because they're inexpensive, they look good, and they're easy to add. Line 20 snaps, we're going to talk about those when we jump over to assemble. So on our pattern, we're going to do this a little bit differently. We're going to start on a center mark and measure out. So let's start right here with a poster board. With our poster board, let's cut a strap 5 eighths of an inch wide or about 1.58 centimeters. Make this as wide or as thin as you want to. It's your project. Make it your own. Okay, so to measure for this, let's take a simple tape measure and I'm just going to measure around my wrist back to the same point. For me, that's seven inches, but I want to add a little room to that just to make this more comfortable. So let's say seven and a half inches. So on our pattern piece, let's start with a center line. I'm going to come out seven and a half inches, make a mark for our snap, seven and a half, make a mark for our snap. But we're going to do this a little bit differently. Let's come in our half inch just to give that a little room from the end. But on this end, let's come in three quarters of an inch. That gives us a little tab outside of our snap. That's a nice touch. Now, on our spots, starting on our center line, we're going to add these at every one inch, or about 2.54 centimeters. Again, add as many or as few as you want to. But by starting on a center mark, as we work out, we're guaranteed we're going to have the same distance from our last spot to our snap on both ends. Okay, we've got a feel for a simple pattern. Let's jump over to our main table, cut some leather. We cut our first project with a simple box knife. 
nothing complicated. It's going to be the same situation here, but we're going to change directions. We're going to go with a tool that's indispensable in our shop, and we're going to talk about that. But let's start right here. This is our Jasper Chrome Pull-Up, and I have to say it's one of my favorite leathers. Notice how very professional, how very finished and consistent this is. Any project we make with this is going to look exactly the same way. So, on our wood strap cutter, if you're not familiar with one of these, best tool in our shop. So we're going to cut a strap with this. Right there we've got a wing nut, and we can adjust this in or out to whatever width we want. I'm going to come into 5 eighths of an inch or about 1.58, maybe 1.6 centimeters. So let's drop that on that line. There we go. Tighten that down. Now I like to add just a little extra tight to that. Good. Watch how easy this is to cut a perfect strap every time. Yeah. How about that? Okay. Let's make sure both ends are the same width absolutely spot on. Now, this is not going to work on our lighter leathers, leathers that are softer. The leather needs a little bit of body, but when we've got that, indispensable, like I said. Okay, so let's trim this to size. We need 16 and one quarter inches. Good. Okay, let's lay our pattern down and let's mark our holes. Now, I didn't mention this, but it's a good point. Notice on my pattern, I've got different colors circled here because right here, if I circle in black, I know I need to punch a hole. But if I circle this in red, I simply need to mark that. We're going to drop in spots. If we accidentally punch a hole there, spot's not going to work for us. So let's mark this with our all. And there we go. Good. And I can easily see those marks. Let's jump over to our punch table. This is a relatively simple project, but where I'm going with this is let's keep our pattern close when we're punching. Simply because a more complex project, we just need to make sure we don't make a mistake. So right here, our revolving punch, we're going to go with a snap. It's got a little bit larger post. I want this snug. So let's go up to maybe the second or third tube on our revolving punch. Let's punch our holes. Good. Now, we've got our round in punch again, but if we don't have one, how about we just go a different direction here? Let's just maybe cut across. There we go. That actually looks pretty good. Or we could just clip our corners. And that doesn't look bad either. So, again, the tool, best way to go, but we can cer certainly work around that. Okay, let's move this out of the way and set our snap. So, we're going to go with a line 20 snap. This is for lighter weight leathers, as opposed to a line 24 snap, thicker leathers. So 20 lighter, 24 thicker. Now with this, we've got four pieces to our snap. Really, all we're doing, these two pieces, the two female pieces, those are the pieces that are going to actually bite. So all we're doing really is just riveting those onto our strap. So on this end, let's come in with our post that's got a naked back on it. Let's lay that in. Now, we can get these two reversed. It doesn't really matter. But the way it is typically done is notice I've got the flange on the inside here. There we go. In fact, let's look at a line 24 a little easier to see. Yeah, there we go. We've got a flange on the inside. Now, here's a big point. If we're crushing the post in our snap, 99 out of 100 times means we've got the wrong setter. So what I've done, these are so incredibly close. You can tell we've got a line 20 and a line 24. Very small difference. So I tend to use a line 24 more often. I'm going to mark that setter with my red tape. So right here, let's go with a mallet. Now what I'd like to do is let's just, let's try to hit this as square as we can. Because what we're doing is we're curling that little post down inside the female piece. There we go. Yeah, notice how that curled down so nicely. Let's get this just to where it won't spin. I don't want to hit it so hard that I actually compress the leather too much. Okay, let's jump over to our cap. So let's take an anvil, and I tend to just glue a little leather on that just so I don't ding my quartz. Okay, let's take this, our cap, from our top grain, flip that over into our anvil, and let's set it exactly the same way. 
And one more. Yeah, there we go. Okay, our snaps are set. Let's reset here at our spots. There are all kinds of ways to set spots, most involving equipment, which typically us crafters don't have. All we need is an art knife. You'll see how easy this is. And this is not terribly tedious either. We'll blow right through these. So we're going to use a quarter inch round spot solid brass. That's going to look good on this leather. Now, I am notorious for picking the darkest possible leather for our projects. But in my defense, that's a beautiful leather. Okay, so five steps to setting a spot by hand. Let's take one of our spots. We've got our marks here. Now I'm right-handed, gonna do my best to do this left-handed, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a spot and I'm gonna straddle our mark and press that in. There we go. So now I can see our tine holes. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick that up, but I can see that, okay? Step number one. Step number two. Let's take an art knife and just a small pallet of cardboard because we're gonna push through the leather. I don't wanna ding my blade. So let's turn this around so we can see what we're doing. I'm gonna press my knife through the leather. Now I don't want more slit than spot. So let's only go about 25% of the way down our knife blade. Good, okay. Next step, let's take our spot and let's press this through those two holes. Yeah, went right through, okay. Let's flip this over. Now what I want to do is I want to press that down just to make sure that spot is good and flush. Looks like it is, okay? Let's take the other end of our art knife. Let's be careful because we got a blade there. But let's take that and let's bend those two tines inward. Good, easy enough. Now I can feel that, absolutely. If this is on our wrist, that's going to grab hair and it's going to be uncomfortable. So last step, let's take our mallet. Now I'm going to tap this down. I'm not going to hit, hit it hard enough to ding it. There we go. That's all we need. So let's flip this over. Now I can feel that. I almost can't feel our tines. Just what we're looking for. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, let's work our way down, but let's do this. Let's make this fast. I'm going to take my spot and I'm going to mark all the way down. Then I'm going to slit all the way down, set the spots. Yeah. It just makes it a little bit faster. Well, there we go. That actually is a beautiful project. Now, I'm not one for accessories, but I would wear that in a heartbeat. So two great, simple projects. That's what we're looking for. We have got a beautiful cuff and a bright red keychain. Here's the biggest point. This is just two examples of unlimited project possibilities. We can go so many directions. But here's another thought that we might not have thought of. Well, now, first off, designing the project, putting it together, seeing it come out. Love it. But here's the other side of that. Let's take some of our projects and give these away as gifts. Friends, family members, co-workers, win, win, win. You know what? We may never have to buy another gift. And a handmade gift, absolutely the best possible. I hope you dive in, dig in, and have a great time with it. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.